9, 10, 12. That's how math works at Intel. First things first, this is one of those times where we actually have to stop and go out of our way to thank the supporters of this channel. So I've got two of these, one more back there. I've got my DDR5 RAM, I've got my motherboards, I've got everything going for the testing that we're gonna be doing on Alder Lake. And you can kind of see where I'm going with this. There is no way in hell any normal tech tuber that doesn't get review samples that could afford to do all this testing like I can. It's all thanks to you guys, the ones that are in the Discord, the ones that support every single month. So you can probably see how tired I am just like from how black my eyes are because the problem with not getting review samples is I have to scrounge on day one to try and get as much testing as possible. Now, it's much easier for the larger guys because they just throw in a memory kit, XMP, press a button, right? Spits out a number. Me, I go as far in depth as possible into finding out what makes these things tick. So if you're sick and tired of biased reviews, incorrect reviews, reviews that use 3200 megahertz RAM, click on the support button down below, join the community, help me achieve real valuable information when it comes to products like this, especially with prices going up. Inflation's going crazy up in here. This, this, this cost me like three grand. Three grand all paid for by you guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. I'm so blessed to have you guys. So on the menu for today, we got all the heavy hitters, baby. Links to all these products in the description below. If you are interested in any one of these products, you can also support the channel by clicking them and just buying them from there. It doesn't cost you anything extra and helps me out a lot. We got the 5950X the 10900K, and the 12900K. Now, these processors are all so vastly different from each other, just in like their architecture and how they work. And they all require very, very different methods of tuning. So when you max all of these platforms out, they all, they all look very different from each other. But we're not really interested in how they work per se. We're not really interested in like what their maximum RAM speed is. All we care about is what the FPS number at the end spits out at their respective maximums. So today's contenders, the 5950X, we're running this at 4.7 all core, 3800 megahertz RAM, dual rank C14. For the 10900K, we're running 5.3 gigahertz all core, 4533 C17, dual rank RAM. For the 12900K, we're running 5.2 gigahertz all core, 4000 C14 RAM, dual rank. Do you see how they're kind of all over the place in terms of clock speeds, memory speeds? Whatever, timings, doesn't matter. The reason I even mention it is more of like a reference point for you guys. If you have one of these products, you can kind of run your hardware at the settings that I'm setting here and see if your numbers match up with what I show you today. The 11900K is not making an appearance today. That thing is garbage, it loses and everything. No one should be buying 11th gen. That's literally just like, 9, 10, 12, right? I don't even know why Intel released that shit. Now, the last thing I'll say before we get into the numbers here, the games that I chose today are games that I wanted to have an actual use case for this processor. So Intel marketed this processor as having the highest single thread performance. So the games that I wanted to benchmark are all very single threaded dependent, except for Warzone, that shit scales with everything. But aside from Warzone, the rest of them are all sing uh, single thread. I really, really, really tried to find games where like, is it, is it worth upgrading to this thing? Does it even win? Well, let's go find out. All right, first up we have Civilization VI. And this one's a pretty simple one. You launch the game, you press the button, and it essentially simulates how long it takes for the artificial intelligence to make its decisions and process the next move. So pretty much what we're after is the lowest possible time between turns so that when we're actually playing the game, we don't have to wait for the CPU to decide what to do next. So we're going to be using the slowest processor as the baseline, which is the 5950X. 
the 10900k is 5% faster than that and the 12900k is 7% faster than that so here we have the 12900k at a 2% lead over the 10900k so that's pretty much a tie you can you could consider all of these the same i guess all three of these cpus are going to give you uh almost identical experience next up we have borderlands 2 in one specific spot so pretty much why i picked this was a few years back when i was actually playing this game i'll never forget it where i actually got motion sickness in this one spot like where you start the game and you go into this really icy large area you look out into the open and i remember having frame drops to like 70 80 fps and it I was actually completely unplayable to me so i when i thought about alder lake i was like okay i'm gonna go back to this exact spot and see if it made a difference and uh yeah lo and behold here we go you can just tell how horridly horridly optimized this game is because they're looking at the cpu usage and gpu usage and all of them you're it's using 10 percent of the cpu and 20 percent of the gpu like it's 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 like one of the worst console ports ever made so with that being said we're using the 10900k as the baseline since it's the slowest the 5950x is 10 percent faster on average and the 12900k is 30 percent faster on average the unoptimized console port king csgo is up next uh in my opinion this benchmark is a complete waste of time and pointless but i know that if i didn't do it somebody would complain in the comments so here it is at what point do we say anything over a thousand fps is probably pointless actually interestingly enough the 12900k hits a peak of 2000 fps so Oh shit, we're at 2,000 now, boys. So here we got a 14% win for the 12900K. Uh, I left out the 5950X here in the end because I realized that I was using an all-core 4.7 port instead of PBO. And in this game, you actually want to use PBO and just have a couple of cores boosting to 5 gigahertz. So, or, or some kind of dynamic switcher if you have that on your motherboard, right? So... That's why the score is so low for the 5950X. I was at 4.7, but now I was just too tired to care and go back and do it again. So if you do have a Ryzen chip, you can leave it on PBO yourself and run it and then compare the numbers. But for for now, we'll just say it's a 14% win for the 12900K over the 10900K. So that's just that's just straight IPC. All right, original crisis up next and for this one instead of taking an average of, of the uh fps what i was actually interested in in seeing was what the lowest low was when all the barrels are flying around and all the physics is happening right so that's what we're gonna go with so the 5950x had a low of 38 uh 10900k had a low of 26 and the 12900k had a low of 49. so i'm not gonna put them up but the lows the 12900k was 88 percent faster than the 10900k and also 29 percent faster than the 5950x so this is probably going to be the strongest showing for the 12900k today it's got it all it's got the cache the clock speed and the latency all right PUBG is next even though this game is old and nobody plays it anymore kind of dead um i went to the training mode anyway just to see how this old unreal version of the engine would work and this is more of like a cash benchmark because it's in training mode uh the map doesn't go very far so that's why the the 5950x and the 12900k do so much better on this one but if you actually played the real game you'd see the 10900k doing much better here but just for just for the engine's sake in training mode this is like the highest theoretical maximum that you'll see on these cpus right so the data is still valuable here so you can see that when the game can actually fit in the cache and not have to go out to ram the 5950x catches up here to the point where they're pretty much tied with each other rift breaker is up next this is a rts that throws millions of units at your bases all at once all over the map so 
it's pretty much hammering the CPU as hard as it can to keep up with all the, uh, you know, not zergling. I was going to say zergling. All the enemy AI at once. So CPU latency and clock speed are going to be super important with this one. You can just kind of see the 10900K and the 12900K hanging neck and neck. And then the 5950X just getting destroyed. It just cannot keep up with all those units on the map. Which is totally understandable. It was not really a good uh, RTS CPU. I forgot to mention all the benchmarks today are run at 1080p high with an RTX 3090. And the results. So we got the 5950X at the baseline here. 10900K, 17% on average faster than that. And then the 12900K with a whopping 37% faster. Um, don't pay attention to the 0.1% lows. There was some kind of weird like loading screen judder that I couldn't get rid of on all three of them. Uh, that's why it's so low, but the, but the 1% and the average, I would look at those just fine. But the 0.1, yeah, there was a loading screen judder, but it is what it is. All right, with that being said, let's move on to Warzone, everyone's favorite benchmark game, and also the hardest to tune. Let's go, boys. The 12900K demolishes the other two CPUs out on the traffic lane test here. It's the same run we've always been doing with our CPU testing. So this is just super, super impressive to see with this thing. I was posting some teasers over on Twitter there earlier, and I was getting 330 FPS out in the open. Uh, this thing is absolutely insane in Warzone. Th this CPU is what we've been waiting for. And I get killed by some sweaty nerd over here, and I didn't bother redoing it because you guys get the point. This dude over on the 10900K run actually tried to interrupt my damn benchmark. All right, now for the big dick benchmark, the Nakatomi Plaza. The gains aren't as significant here as we all know. The Nakatomi Plaza is just savage as hell on all CPUs. Uh, the Ryzen suffers the worst here, same as always. But the 12900K does maintain about 204, 205 FPS the whole way through. 10900K does drop down a bit, so... It, whether that's going to make a competitive edge or not, not at the plaza. No matter, no matter who's fighting at the plaza, you just got to assume that everyone's in the same boat as you are. But it's it, the 12900K still does maintain the highest fps by a noticeable margin at the plaza we finally have a processor that wins in everything it's also a no compromise platform too it has the most pci express lanes it has pci express 5 i don't know why whatever it's there it also has the most lanes it has like four nvme slots per motherboard three pci express slots you can make this thing a workstation. You can make this thing a gaming CPU. You can make it an all-in-one. You can, like, this This thing is, like, Intel nailed it out of the park with this one, uh, by, all, by all accounts. You know how, like, before, it was, like, the 10900K and the 5950X kind of tie. You got to pick the right tool for the job. You know what I'm saying? Maybe this game over here. No, no, no. This thing is the one tool for all the jobs. That's what your mom said. This thing impressed me a lot. A lot. Intel... Intel has done it. Now, all my predictions for this thing did come true, and they are all correct, except the retro games, like Borderlands and Crisis. So you can say this thing's, what, 10% faster in Warzone than a 10900K? Whether that's worth it to you or for the money or not is, you know, up to you. But the retro games, man, the retro and the console ports, that's, that, that's where this thing is the GOAT. Like, what was that? 75, 80% faster in Borderlands? Holy shit, dude. This is, uh, this is the one you want for, like, emulation and console ports. And then there's the 5950X. Where does that even slot in, right? It kind of wins in some titles, loses in others. The 10900K destroys it most of the time. And then it's like, but, 
that one is a workstation workhorse. <laughs> a workstation workhorse, right? Maybe you need a dual purpose workstation that where you can play games and do work on the side. Maybe that is the way to go for you. Now you might say the 12900K is faster and everything. Why would you ever pick a 10900K as your weapon or tool of choice, right? And it's just as simple as cost of the platform. A 10850K and like an MSI Z490 Unify off of Amazon, both of those together cost about 550 bucks, right? That is literally the cost of the CPU alone, not even. So you can get a 10, even a 10900K and a motherboard for the price of just this processor. And the motherboards for these things are quite expensive, so. So then you gotta look at cost per frame analysis. I don't really do that type of content. You can look into that yourself with the numbers that I provided for you, right? So if you are a, let's say a budget Warzone player, the 10900K is still the way to go. Why, why would you pay double the platform cost for a 5% increase, right? It's exactly what I said it was gonna be, double the platform cost, 5% boost, right? If you're a retro gamer though, Oh boy, pull. Oh. So AMD has a lot of ground to catch up, man. AMD released the 5950X, despite the main, the, the large, despite the large tech tuber saying that it actually tied Intel, it never did. The 10900K was still the king if you knew what you were doing. We all know that, right? Now Intel with this processor, they just lapped AMD. And the reason is this processor, attacked the lowest hanging fruit of the other two, right? The 10900K, clock speed, memory latency, ring bus, monolithic die. This has that too. Ryzen, large cache, high IPC. This has that too. You can think of this chip as like what a 5800X would have been if it was monolithic, essentially. I'm actually gonna be upgrading my wife to this one as well. She plays a lot of New World. And in those boss fights, when I look at her screen, it dips down to about 70 FPS in those crazy ass boss fights, right? So I don't have those numbers today, but I think this is gonna give a hefty boost in MMO type games as well, right? Also, last thing, I'm not sure if you guys remember, but in Halo Infinite and Battlefield 2042, those games only used about three cores, and I would cap out at about 220 FPS in both of those games with a 5950X and a 10900K. Now, those games aren't out yet, so I can't test them, but I'm assuming that this chip is also going to be the king for those games as well, just because that the eight cores on this one are just so powerful unless they make Battlefield scale with cores again, then we'll have that whole 5% nonsense again. But again, giving you all the information that I can, right? But I will be selling all my 10900Ks now. I'm gonna keep my one Godbin one just for future benchmarks and retro gaming maybe if I need it. Um, but yeah, the 12900K is the new test bench. The next couple of videos coming up, I'm gonna try the 6900 XT on it, see what works better in which games. I'm also gonna be doing a DDR4 versus DDR5 comparison, again, coming up later. This was really just to get what this thing is capable, capable of out of the door quickly. Anyway, guys, if you like the content, hit that subscribe button, do all that YouTube SEO stuff, like, share, subscribe. We're almost at 10,000, baby, let's go for it. And uh, leave a comment or a question down below if you want me to test something specific with these things because they are, these processors are so dynamic that I, I just can't cover or think of everything, right? But if you have any suggestions, leave them down below. And I'll see you guys very soon in the next one or on Twitch on Saturday. Talk to you later.